As we acknowledge the land this morning, I invite us to be here now. Let's slow down and ground here for a moment. I invite you to pause, maybe feel your breath. Feel how your body is held and anchored in this place, wherever you may be. And through the force of gravity, we now shift and notice the land itself and how it's supporting us, how it's holding us. We recognize that this land has been home to indigenous peoples for many thousands of years, long before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land, they lived and thrived. We're hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. The light of Christ calls us to walk in the way of the peacemaker. We walk this road one step at a time. As we discover and create this road, we listen within and we listen to those around us. The Christ light calls us to support one another as we journey. And in the face of systemic racism here in Canada and in the face of the many ways we are a part of it, we perpetuate it, we are called to listen and learn, to challenge and change the status quo, and to allow space for others to walk their own road. May this light remind us to walk faithfully in the way of Jesus. We do that in the spirit of welcome, and we're so glad that you're joining us. Whatever time of day you're tuning in or in this present moment, may you know that you are valued and welcomed as part of this community. We are a group of people trying our best to follow in the way of Jesus. We do not vote the same, think the same, love the same, but we make our way together. Come, let us worship God. Through 
the worlds far and wide, let there be light. And that light. Well, it's with us as part of the cloud of witnesses. And on our gatherings for worship, we always light lights honoring those who've gone before. Perhaps you're remembering someone today for their anniversary or their birthday, someone you're missing. May this light call to you and remind you that you are not alone. And that light is also shining in the places in our world that most need peace, whether peace of heart or peace in the midst of conflict. May together this light call us to the path of peace we walk together. Walking a path of peace. I am walking a path of peace. I am walking a path of peace. Lead me home. Lead me home. I am walking. Walking a path of peace, I am walking a path of peace. Lead me home, lead me home. I am walking a path of peace. I am walking a path of peace. I am walking a path of peace. Lead me home. Lead me home. The living God is with us and with all creation. A passage from the book of Proverbs. May we be equipped by these words to walk in love for God, ourselves, our neighbors, all people, and all God's creation. Proverbs 8. Do you hear Lady Wisdom calling? Can you hear Madam Insight raising her voice? She's taken her stand at first and main, at the busiest intersection, right in the city square where the traffic is thickest. She shouts, you, I'm talking to all of you, everyone out here on the streets. Listen, you idiots, learn good sense. You blockheads, shape up. Don't miss a word of this. I'm telling you how to live well. I'm telling you how to live at your best. My mouth chews and savors and relishes truth. I can't stand the taste of evil. You'll only hear true and right words from my mouth. Not one syllable will be twisted or skewed. You'll recognize this as true. You with open minds, truth-ready minds will see it at once. Prefer my life disciplines over chasing after money and God knowledge over a lucrative career. For wisdom is better than all the trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. 
I am Lady Wisdom, and I live next to sanity. Knowledge and discretion live just down the street. The fear of God means hating evil, whose ways I hate with a passion, pride and arrogance and crooked talk. Good counsel and common sense are my characteristics. I am both insight and the virtue to live it out. With my help, leaders rule and lawmakers legislate fairly. With my help, governors govern along with all in legitimate authority. I love those who love me. Those who look for me find me. Wealth and glory accompany me, also substantial honor and a good name. My benefits are worth more than a big salary, even a very big salary. The returns on me exceed any imaginable bonus. You can find me on Righteous Road, that's where I walk, at the intersection of Justice Avenue, handing out life to those who love me, filling their arms with life, armloads of life. God sovereignly made me the first, the basic, before God did anything else. I was brought into being a long time ago, well before earth got its start. I arrived on the scene before ocean, yes, even before springs and rivers and lakes. Before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape, I was already there, newborn. Long before God stretched out her earth's horizons and tended to the minute details of soil and weather and set sky firmly in place, I was there. When God mapped and gave borders to wild ocean, built vast vault of heaven and installed the fountains that fed ocean, when God drew a boundary for sea, posted a sign that said no trespassing, and then staked out earth's foundations, I was right there with God, making sure everything fit. Day after day, I was there with my joyful applause, always enjoying his company, delighted with the world of things and creatures, happily celebrating the human family. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A passage from the Gospel of John. Through these words, may we see God more clearly, love God more dearly, and follow God more nearly, day by day. The Life Light The Word was first. The Word present to God, God present to the Word. The Word was God, in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, 
came into being without him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The light life blazed out of the darkness. The darkness could not put it out. There once was a man named John who was sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John himself was not the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. He was in the world, the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made them to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, this is the one I have told you about who was coming after me, but in fact was already ahead of me. He has always been ahead of me and always had the first word. We all live off of his generous bounty, gift after gift after gift. We got the basics from Moses, and then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding, all this comes through Jesus, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, not so much as a glimpse. This one-of-a-kind God expression who exists at the very heart of the Father has made him plain as day. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for the gifts of wisdom and word woven into creation from the beginning. Today, as we awake to the mystery of life, join us in the search for meaning. Between the words that are said and the words that are heard, may your word of life be known. Amen. This spring, after her eighth birthday, my daughter Nora announced to us that she wanted to redecorate her bedroom, her space, picking her colors, loving new patterns and colors, purples and teals, things that reflected who she was now that she was eight. She spent hours, and we'll put some finishing touches on her room this week. It's been her own season of creation, and I've delighted in encouraging the artist in her to emerge. Watching this unfold in the past few months in our home reminded me of a quote that stayed on my heart from chapter two of We Make the Road by Walking. If you want to know the original artist and what they're like, a smart place to start would be to enjoy the art of creation. It's an invitation to notice the goodness of God, seen in the changing blues of the sky, the spectrum of grays on a cloudy day, the smell of rain, the sound of wind, the ripple of waters, the patterns in beach sand made by the waves, veins in the leaves on trees, individual flowers in a garden or a pot on a terrace, the taste of a fruit in season. And God has placed creativity within all of us from the beginning, an invitation to be part of the pattern of life, co-creators alive and awake to the good. And today's scriptures, they also remind us where this goodness comes from. Proverbs tells us that in the beginning was lady wisdom. Before God did anything else, she was brought into being a long time ago. Well before the earth got its start, she arrived on the scene before ocean. Yes, even springs and rivers and lakes before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape. Wisdom was already there, newborn. 
And then the Gospel of John adds its insight to these creation stories we know so well. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. John had a special term for the pattern of meaning that God has spoken or written into the universe. The Gospel of John calls it logos, which is often translated as the English word. We find logos in words like biology, anthropology, and psychology, the logic of life, of human development, or the human personality. In the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. The Logos was in the beginning with God. This word, or Logos, he said was made flesh in a man named Jesus. In other words, if we want to know what God is like and what the universe is about, we should pay attention to the logic, the meaning, the wisdom, and the patterns found in the life of Jesus. He communicated this logos or logic of God in his teachings. He lived this logos or pattern of God in his life. He showed the logos or essence of God in the way he treated others. From his birth to his death and beyond, John believes Jesus translates the logic or meaning or pattern of the heart of God into terms that we can understand skin and bone, muscle and breath, nerve and action. Now you might be thinking, why does this Logos matter? It really matters what logic we use, what pattern of meaning making we practice to get to the heart of the universe. Do we think that the universe runs by the logic of creativity and goodness and love? Or do we think it's all going to hell in a handbasket or falling apart. Just listen to those around you and yourself as we interpret what's happening in our world. Listen to media, to friends and family, the voice in your own head. You'll hear other ways that people understand the logic of the universe because there are competing logos showing up in the way we describe and understand our lives. It's there in how we complain and who we blame. You'll see the first one is the idea that life is a battlefield, a war, survival of the fittest, a competition like survivor, the strongest survive. I was at a dinner just the other day listening to someone talk about how much we need money and that in making decisions about our lives, it's the richest who win and beat the struggle. Or with school, as a parent, instead of leaning into this year with grace and openness and possibility, I was holding on to fear that my daughter would get behind in grade three. This idea that we need to get more and more ahead to win in life. That's there as a logos about how the world works. Or how about the idea that life is compliance? A keep your head down and do what you're told story of power and domination and submission. That life is like a big organization. You need to stay in your place. Fall in line, son. Play it safe. You'll notice it when you answer the question, I just couldn't speak up because. Or how about the idea that at the heart of the universe is like a machine, just unfolding, wound up and released and ready to go. And what we need to do is just grab whatever pleasure we can. That's all there is and all there ever will be. Those three understandings of the meaning of life are at work in our world. They're part of the story. What does it look like to take a step back or a balcony view, to look for the pattern and the meaning, the wisdom and the logic woven into the galaxies, the planets, the forests, the fields, the plants, the animals in you and me, or to see it in the life of a poor man traveling across the land with a band of students and friends 
telling stories, confronting injustice, helping people in need, recognizing that conflict and compliance and the machine are at work but with an acknowledgement of a deeper purpose and a meaning rooted in goodness and creativity and love. We're part of God's creative project filled with beauty and opportunity and challenge and meaning. And it runs on a pattern that brings that full circle. We see this embodied in the life of Christ. We need to trust this knowing. We need to proclaim it when the voices of the other ways of giving meaning to our world scream louder. This is the Logos I want to live by. This is the word of good news for us today. This is the meaning that speaks into all of our fears about elections and economy and pandemic and climate change. This is the Logos that can inform our days when we're wondering why to get out of bed, what it matters, and what means the most. This is the Logos that not only informs our days, but the way we treat each other. This is a Logos that helps us discern and interpret patterns in life. It helps us to pay attention to the things we took for granted and see them from a different angle. This is what's guiding the world that we are part of co-creating. A world where, in the words of Brian McLaren, pregnancy abounds, newness multiplies, freedom grows, meaning expands, wisdom flows, healing happens, and goodness runs wild. This is a world we're part of. A world where we can open ourselves to the possibilities that Christ showed us. Possibilities that play in our lives like a song. I 
I can from the wisdom in your word. Your words I treasure deep within. They comfort me and discipline that I may have no cause to sin. Your words bring righteousness. I love your word. It gives me light. It guides me through the darkest night. Your law is perfect in every way. How I love your word. How I love your word. How I love your word. How I love. And so the wisdom and word call us to this table. Whether you've had your elements repaired or you're just going to the fridge or pulling the car over and stopping to grab a chocolate bar and a Diet Pepsi, there is room at this table for everything is spiritual. The living God is with us and with all creation. Lift up your hearts that we may lift them to the living God. Let us give thanks to the creator of all, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. At this table, we remember who we are and whose we are. We find ourselves in the pattern of the universe, in wheat becoming bread and in grapes becoming wine. We are aware of the mystery and we proclaim this holiness, that God of love is with us and reminding us that the whole universe, earth, sea, and sky are full of God's glory. And we praise God. We praise God for the times that we have heard the story anew, for the times that a simple meal has become a moment of grace, and for the life of the one who mirrors for us what God is like, and live that pattern that shaped in us a world that could be for everyone a love that never ends. And so we remember that when Jesus was with his friends, he took a loaf of bread as he had so many times before. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he shared it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you share this, remember me. And then he took a cup, as he had so many times before. He poured it. I'm sure the disciples could taste it in the pouring. He blessed it, and he shared it. And he said, this is my lifeblood poured out for you. Every time you drink it, remember me. For in this meal is the promise that Christ has come. Christ has died. Christ will come again. He is with us in the breaking of the bread. And the Spirit of God is on these gifts. And in the sharing of this meal, wherever we share it with whoever is around our table, we know that in the tasting of it, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. The bread of life, broken for you. The cup.
cup of blessing poured out for you. Let us pray. Holy One, with the taste of this meal on our lips, we are reminded of your presence, that everything is sacred. And in the sharing of this simple meal, may we be called forth into the world to live your love, to pray in the way Jesus taught us, and to carry that prayer out in song.
On the Sundays when we don't share in this meal together, the liturgical action of communion is the practice of offering. And there are so many ways that people in this community have given generously as the food bank has started up in our neighborhood again, in the ways that we're caring for our children and teachers as they're going back to school, as we continue to offer pastoral care to those in need. The prayer shawl knitters have been knitting avidly during this pandemic homebound time, and there have been shawls sent across our country to those who need to be reminded of the good and healing power of God's love. That's just a few of the ways that your offering is touching hearts, and I am grateful for your offerings that are dropped off or mailed into the church office or done through the virtual offering plate on our website or e-transferred to office at islingtonunited.org or making it simple to have the practice of generosity be part of your walk of faith. And soon, well, six weeks from now, a whole group of us will be either walking or running uh, to support our refugee support ministry. I've been training for the half marathon and hope to check that off my list as donations are coming in for our major fundraiser for that work. For 40 years, there's been a legacy of welcoming the stranger and having them find home. So feel free to find out more about that in the coming weeks. But no, you're welcome to join the walk or the run. Of course, it'll be virtual in our neighborhood or yours, but there is a way for us uh, to make a difference together. I'm grateful that you could be part of that. Let's go from this place with the sound of music. Go surrounded by the unconditional love of God and looking for logos and wisdom to find you. And may the spirit of unconditional love lift you up and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>